Like all of you, I have deep and abiding relationships with people from all political backgrounds. It should not be seen as partisan to recognize a colleague's departure. It is an act of friendship and respect. He was standing there in the full nonpartisan trappings of his nonpartisan office, paying a partisan tribute to a partisan friend at a partisan event. Well, just two months on the job, House Speaker Greg Fergus getting ready to face his Parliament Hill colleagues, set for two hours of grilling at a House committee over accusations of partisanship. To catch up, last weekend a video message from the Speaker was played at the Ontario Liberal Party convention as part of a tribute to their outgoing interim leader John Fraser. It included a tribute from Fergus and he was wearing his Speaker's robes. The video quickly drew opposition criticism as a speaker is supposed to be nonpartisan. Fergus says it's not partisan to recognize a colleague and that he thought that video would only be played at an intimate event, not at the main convention itself. It backfired. Now the speaker, a role that's not supposed to be in the headlines, back in the headlines again just two months after the previous speaker, Anthony Rota, resigned under a cloud. Here to preview the speaker's hot seat moment on Monday. The front bench is back on this Friday. Carlene Varian, Melanie Paradis, Garatin Singh, Rachel Aiello. Melanie, I'm going to start with you here. Serious stuff or not? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, first of all, the speaker never should have done this video. But if he felt compelled that he really needed to do this video for his friend, then he absolutely should not have done it in his speaker's robes or in his speaker's office. That is a hard no. That's clearly a violation of the rules. It is as simple as going outside and putting on a coat. Like he very easily could have just changed his his environment, and this he, he was probably would have been given a pass if he had just done that. But because someone was either lazy or incompetent, this video was made and was played at a partisan event, and it was entirely inappropriate. And I just need to say that the NDP were given a chance two months ago when when Greg Fergus was voted to become the speaker to pick someone else. To, to vote for for someone who is less partisan and and here and they didn't and so here we are two months later and we have another scandal with a speaker who has demonstrated himself to to be partisan and to not understand the nature of the rule carlene greg fergus was elected as a liberal mp about eight years ago so he certainly knows how the house of commons operates and arguably the role of the speaker that he put himself up to become and now he is your take on what we're seeing I think I'll, I'll tell you two things, Todd. Um, one, certainly um, a bit of an unfortunate, um, what I call a rookie mistake. When you've been a member of parliament for some years, you get accustomed to doing the types of things that members of parliament are asked to do all the time, send a video greeting to somebody who's retiring or stepping down from their role. Um, mm -hmm. But when you take on the role of speaker, you've got to be careful about separating those two, um, wearing those two different hats, so to speak. You've got to be careful about what you do when you're wearing your speaker's robes um, and, and, and where you are when you're doing it. So um, I, I do think that it was an unfortunate error. But the second thing that I will say, Todd, is that I know Greg Fergus. I know him to be a person of deep personal integrity um, and deep passion for the institution of parliament. I think that most members of parliament from every political party in the House of Commons would probably come on this show and tell you the same thing. So I do not for a second doubt his commitment to the role of speaker. Um, I think that uh, he is somebody who cares very deeply about having his time as speaker be a period that's marked by leaving the institution of, of Parliament better than it was when he began. And I really hope that he is able to move past this because I think he has a lot to give to the institution. Garadin, what do you think? A rookie mistake or he should have known better or, and if so, what do you think he should do about it? All of the above. Like this is one of those situations that it's so true. It's so easy to mitigate. Just throw on a suit and go outside. This, the, the, the position of a speaker is supposed to be nonpartisan. And wearing that purposely in this context is incredibly problematic. But this is a part of a pattern we see with the Liberal government. We see it when the Prime Minister filmed a fundraising video in his Prime Minister's office. We see this time and again. And it, I think it speaks to a, a, like a deeper root uh, problem with, um, amongst the Liberal government where they take that really important seat and they take it for granted far too often. And instead of holding it up to the the, you know, the important nonpartisan position or in general, just the important position that these seats hold, 
you see it time and again being used either for fundraising or for partisanship. It's a problem. I think it goes beyond just the speaker to the root of the Liberal Party. Rachel Aiello, we've seen on the conservative side of this, you know, Andrew Scheer really pounds. He himself is a former speaker. He knows what the job entails. An opportunity here to embarrass the government again, the political angle as you're following this. What do you think? Well, what I'm really watching for next week is, is there another shoe to drop? Greg mm. Fergus is supposed to be testifying. The committee's asked him to come for two hours on Monday morning. And I think what's really going to be at the heart of whether or not a resignation recommendation comes down is whether it has genuinely been able to back up Greg Fergus's line that he did not know this was going to be played at the Ontario Liberal Party Leadership Convention. Um, if that is true, I think he's going to be able to uh, likely fight another day. Um, but if anything else comes out that puts that into question, that he misled the House in that degree, or someone in his office was aware of the nature of where this is going to be streamed, uh, then I think the opposition pushing for him to go will have some leverage. Um, but just as some other folks have reflected on, I spoke to Greg um, not long after he got into this role, and I think it's absolutely fair to say he thinks being speaker is pretty cool. Um, he is a procedural nerd, so I can kind of see how this all unfolded, as unfortunate as it was, and that is why uh, you need that check and balance. You need someone in your office to be able to say, hey, wait a minute, let's think this through. Uh, and so at best, he skates through this, you know, with a bit of acrimony, is able to build that trust back up uh, with that recognition in mind, or at worst, as you kind of set up there, um, we could be in for another speaker election, um, which I don't know how many layers of historic I can put on it, um, but that's what we could be looking at either late next week or when they come back in January. Yeah, it strikes me, uh, back to you, Mel, the idea of sort of an, an error in judgment. You know, anytime you're wearing those robes and then someone's shooting a video, I mean, does the light not go off? And you say, oh boy, like, you know, even if there's the slightest chance this could be repurposed onto social media, whatever, when in doubt, leave it out. Uh, do you think he should resign? No, I think that the Liberals need to learn how to apologize better. I think that this is a kind of an epidemic. The liberals just don't seem to understand that when you apologize, it cannot be accompanied by a list of excuses. And that's the nature of this apology. I think he really should have just ex taken responsibility for the mistake and left it at a clean, humble apology. Now, because he's provided this additional context, I'm talking from a communication standpoint here, because he provided the, these excuses, the committee is going to have the opportunity to dig into all of that. Uh, and he's actually given them more fuel and fodder here when instead he could have just left it at a, at a good, clean apology. I think that, I think that Liberal Caucus needs a, a lesson in, in how to give good apologies. Carleen, what do you think is going to happen on Monday? I will be interested to see the tactics that the opposition takes uh, to go after the speaker um, and how aggressive they are. I think it's very interesting that the Conservatives have chosen Andrew Scheer, their former party leader, as the, the key spokesperson to, to pounce on the speaker's actions here. Um, because this is someone who, during his time as speaker under Prime Minister Stephen Harper, uh, came under a fair fair amount of scrutiny himself um, when reports surfaced in the media that he was alleged to have uh, hired and employed his sister in his speaker's office um, and hired his sister-in-law in his member of parliament's office. So when you're looking at different degrees of inappropriateness or, or the impact of decisions, uh, bad decisions that are made, I think, you know, running a, running a career placement service for your family out of your, your taxpayer dollars coffer goes a little bit further um, in terms of, of degrees of uh, cringiness than uh, one errant happy retirement video. So I wonder how the Conservatives are going to play play their cards on Monday and who, which spokesperson they'll choose um, in order to make sure that this doesn't end up in a, a, a two-way mudslinging match. Um, but other than that, I'm frankly not expecting too many big headline moments uh, coming out of Monday's proc. Garad and I can give you about 30 seconds of your final thoughts on this. My final thoughts are that I think there's a lot more important issues that we should be talking about as a whole. I think the issues around housing, the issues around, around affordability, the issues of the fact that Canadians can't make ends meet. This should be at center stage in the conversation of Parliament, and it's unfortunate that these, you know, distractions. I'd say, in the in the in light of what we're really up against right now, uh, end up taking all the oxygen.
Garat and Singh, Carlene Varai and Melanie Paradis and our very own Rachel Aiello joining us for the Friday Front Branch. Good to see all of you. Have a great weekend ahead.